Hey there, Dengas Stu here. Today's video is on winterizing an outboard motor. For those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, it's getting towards the end of the boating season. So I'm gonna go through some of the things that I recommend doing before you put your boat away for the winter. Of course, here in Australia, we're about to start our summer, so happy days. There's a few phases to doing this winterization if you do it completely. And to my mind, it starts with the last trip of the season. As always, there's a few differences between doing a two-stroke motor and a four-stroke motor. And in this case, I'm gonna be doing a four-stroke. But really, think of two strokes as almost exactly the same except some things you don't have to do. What I'm gonna start with is an oil change. So rather than letting that old oil and any moisture, impurities, whatever that's in that oil sit the whole off season, I'm gonna do the oil change now, before this last trip of the season. It's coming into summer, who am I kidding, but you know. The very first thing I'm gonna do before starting that final trip of the season is do an oil change. The idea there is that you get all the old oil out before it sits for the winter. That old oil will have a lot of sort of contaminants, maybe even some moisture, who knows. But you wanna get that out, run some fresh oil right through the motor during that last trip, and that way you know it'll sit and it'll be fine for that whole winter period. When it comes to oil changes, most outboards have a drain plugs somewhere on the side or the back, just below the oil pan, I'll show you that. But it can be pretty messy. Uh, certain outboards you tilt up all the way and then tilt to the side to try and angle that drain hole down. It almost always goes everywhere, so it's part of the course. A lot of garages will use a vacuum pump just to suck the oil out through the dipstick hole. It's much cleaner, but you don't get as much out, which is why I always prefer to do it this way. These Hondas have got a cover over the drain plug. Got my oil pan underneath, ready for it to run down the leg and miss completely. This drain plug's got an aluminium washer on it that I'm going to replace as well. I'm going to gradually tilt this all the way down to make sure the oil pan's drain completely. Next thing I'm going to do is take the cowling off and take the oil filter out. On this Honda, oil filter's just here on the side. I'm just going to poke a rag in here to catch some of the oil that's going to invariably leak when I undo it. To get the oil filter out, I'm going to use this uh, removal tool, little 3 8 drive. I actually quite like this one, it's been quite effective. This oil filter was an aftermarket one, really common Z436, you can find at any auto parts store. It's probably worth mentioning, the manual actually says you can use this little cover as a spout. So you can kind of hook this, this in here, so as it falls it'll come down here, but you have to hold your pan up here. To be honest with you, I'm kind of happy just leaving it on the ground and letting it run out. And then I'll just wipe the leg and give it a bit of a spray with brake clean to get the residual oil off. But it is actually the uh, intended design. I've popped the sump plug back in with a new aluminium washer, and then just nip that up, giving it a wipe to get the oil off. And then just pop this little cover back on. This engine takes 2.4 litres of 10W30 oil, which I've got here, and I'm just gonna use a bit of this oil just to lubricate the O-ring on the top here. So just putting some clean oil on that, and then we'll wind this on. These oil filters are only ever sort of snug down finger tight. Don't use tools to put them on. Now the filter's in, I'll just put the oil in. Obviously if you've got a two stroke, you don't do this whole step. The next thing I do is add some fuel stabiliser to the petrol that's in here. Now the one I've got here is this Stabil. There's other brands, I'm not really vouching for this, it's just what my local store had in stock. 
So I'm sure there are others. What I'm going to do is add this now because I want to go for this final run still and I want to make sure that when I put the boat away all the fuel in the fuel filter, the bulb, uh, the fuel lines all has fuel in it that's been treated. If I add this after the last run it'll only be in the fuel that's in the tank itself. Products like Stabler are designed to preserve fuel, stop it going off in the period you're not using it and it says on the packet that it'll do up to 24 months. It says it's safe for four stroke and two stroke which is good. If you don't put this in before your last run of the season it recommends running for about five minutes just to make sure it's treating the whole system so even if you have the muffs and let it run for five minutes should be good. Judging by my fuel gauge I'd say this about less than 10 litres of fuel in this tank and it says that 30 millilitres of stable treats 10 litres of fuel so I'm going to put in maybe 20 mils. This bottle's got a neat little system with measurements up here and by squeezing the bottle you can just add stable into this top section and then when you're done pour that in the tank. So now we're ready to go out for one last trip. I've chosen to take this boat out for one last run because the fuel filter on this, that water separating fuel filter, is quite large. If you don't have a large fuel filter like that, you can probably just run the boat for five minutes on the earmuffs on the trailer and you'll get that treated fuel all the way through the system. I changed the oil on this motor, being a four stroke, but you should also change the gearbox oil. I didn't want to change both today because I don't really want to make this a whole repetition of the service video, but changing your gearbox oil and your sump oil is something I'd highly recommend before you put the boat away. The last thing you want to find is you've got emulsified oil in the gearbox and let that sit for six months. When you get back from this run, obviously you're going to have to go through all the standard things you would do at the end of a single day's boating. Flush the motor on the muffs to get any salt water or debris out of the cooling system. Maybe use a bit of salt away or something like that for a bit of an extra clean. So don't ignore all those things you would normally do on top of this winterisation process. Oh, and do you like my new t-shirt? For sale on the website. Once you're back home from that trip, thanks to the magic of editing, the first thing I'd do is give everything a good hose down with fresh water. Obviously there's a lot of crossover between putting a boat away at the end of a weekend and putting it away for an entire season. Fresh water on the trailer is a great way to stop bearings, corroding, the frame rusting, particularly if your boat is in salt water. So give everything a good spray with fresh water before putting it in the shed. If you're not going to be keeping the boat in a shed or a garage or whatever, then I recommend covering it with a tarp or something like that because keeping the UV off it will definitely protect things a lot more than just being out in the open. Also, if it is going to be out in the open, even if it's got the tarp on it, recommend taking the bungs out so it doesn't fill up with fresh water and start going mouldy. The first thing I do after that final trip is get a jerry can of fuel and fill up the tank to at least 95%. What you're trying to do there is avoid having that vapour space where moisture will be. Once you've done that, add enough stabiliser to treat the amount of fuel that you added. After that, I'd also be inclined to close off the vent on the tank, but you've got to be careful because if you leave the tank in the sun, it's going to expand, not so much when it's full, it's the vapour that expands, but keep it somewhere cool if you do that. If your boat has batteries, that's the next thing I'd start thinking about. At an absolute minimum, turn the battery switches off or disconnect a lead which you should do at the end of every trip but what I'd recommend doing is taking the battery out and just keeping it on a maintenance charger to make sure that it doesn't go flat just sitting still over that winter period as well so I'll pull this one out and we'll get it on the bench there's a variety of maintenance trickle chargers you can get that you can leave the battery connected to for quite a long period in this case I've just got a standard battery charger that we use in the shop here but I'm going to pop it on the battery, charge it till it's full, because they like to be stored full. Then every so often just pop it back on for a period, get it back from being partially charged to being fully charged through the whole period. Doing that once every couple of weeks, probably even once a month to be honest with you, is enough. Another thing you can do is fog the engine with a fogging spray. It's essentially an oil that you use to sort of coat the engine's interior 
coat the cylinder bores, etc. You can use that by spraying it either in the air intake while the motor's running, recommended particularly for two strokes. The engine will start to burn that heavy oil, it'll blow a lot of smoke out the exhaust, etc. Then you can shut it down. Another option is to take the spark plugs out and spray it straight into the bores. That way you've got a bit of protection so it doesn't seize over the winter or whatever. Instead of using a special aerosol spray you buy, you can actually just put two-stroke oil into a spray bottle, like one of those refillable WD-40 bottles, that kind of thing, and use that to spray in and also spray into the cylinder bores. It's fine to put two-stroke oil into the cylinder bores of four strokes as well, it's no problem. If you do take the spark plugs out and spray into the cylinder bores themselves, just make sure you put the spark plugs back in and the leads back on the spark plugs just to stop them getting contaminated, any moisture getting in, that kind of thing. While we're talking about spraying things, I think it makes a lot of sense to spray certain external components with something like a, a lanolin spray. Components like these pivot brackets, I think are very prone to corrosion, so I think it's well worth keeping them coated. Without wanting to go through a whole repetition of the service video, a lot of this is service items. I also don't think it hurts to push new grease through the pivot tube the way we put new oil in the engine itself, the sump itself. Because we didn't want the old oil sitting there over the whole winter, you really don't want old grease sitting there over the whole winter. So I think re-greasing everything's a great way to go as well. Another really important point when it comes to greasing is these cable steer. You saw last week how badly corroded they can get. So before putting this away, I'd spray a bit of carb cleaner clean the rod up itself, no real need to take it out, just clean it with it fully turned to starboard so it's extended. Once the grease is off, just re-lubricate that rod with a bit of white lithium grease. And then wind the cable all the way in so it's not exposed. With carburetor outboards, both two-stroke and four-stroke, there's a bowl at the bottom of each carburetor that holds fuel. Now that fuel will have fuel stabiliser in it because you've run the boat since you added the stabiliser to the fuel tank, but it's a good idea to drain all those bowls because although the fuel's stabilised and won't go off, it can still evaporate. And if fuel evaporates in a carburetor bowl, it'll leave a sort of varnish residue behind. Almost all carburetor bowls have a little drain plug to make it nice and easy to empty them. I'll show you that. So here's the bottom bowl of this carburetor. This is the carburetor here, and here's the bowl at the bottom. And down low here, there'll be a screw like this. And if we wind it out, you can see fuel starting to run down. Be careful doing this, that you don't have any ignition sources. Don't smoke while you do this. Also, it's good that we've done the step to disconnect the battery before doing this as well. Once each bowl has been drained completely like that, just screw the plug back in all the way so it's nice and airtight. People also talk about disconnecting the fuel line and then running the motor until it stalls. That's not a bad way to get rid of the fuel that's in the carburetor bowls, fuel that's uh, sitting in the internal fuel filters, the internal fuel lines, but if you're going to do that, it's not such an issue with a four-stroke, but if you're going to do it with a two-stroke, bear in mind two-strokes do get their lubrication from fuel. So that's not a problem if you're doing the fogging at the same time. So if you're spraying the fogging oil in with it running into the air intake and you've got the fuel disconnected, you can kind of do the spray till it stalls, you're in pretty good shape then. You've got no fuel lying around and you've kept the motor lubricated and oiled and protected for the winter as well. With a four-stroke, you'll have oil pressure until the motor stalls, so you don't really have any lubrication problems. So it is another option if you don't want to just drain the bowls. Well, that's about it for the procedure I'd go through. I've got to confess, I use my boat all year round. I've never winterized one in my life. There's just no need. Hopefully I haven't missed anything. Uh, if there's something else you do, then please comment, mention it, because it's all good to share these ideas. I think the main messages for me are, Think of it as a bit of a service before you put it away. Having contaminated oil, contaminated grease, you don't want that sitting there for three, six, nine months, whatever. You're much better off 
having fresh oil, fresh grease, all that kind of stuff. It also means when it comes to that first day boating, you're almost ready to go. Fuel is obviously another big issue. You don't want that fuel going off and you don't want the fuel evaporating. So by shutting off any valves, you can anywhere that things can flow, keeping the air away, it's a good way to go. Any breather, any fuel cocks that might be on the boat, just close them all down for the season as well. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this video helps you, particularly those in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment, coming into your winter. We're now coming into our summer in Australia, so we'll have plenty more videos on water, and I hope they sort of tide you over and save you from going cold turkey on the boating. All right, take care, and I'll catch you next week. See ya.